Hello, my name is A.J. Goldsby. I'm a life master from Pensacola, Florida, and I wanted today to bring you the last video in my series of videos on the World Championship match. This is a match that was played between the Indian um, uh, hero. Uh, he's one of my favorites. I've been following Anand's career for you know, practically his entire life and um, watched him slowly climb Mount, Mount Olympus, Olympus and then actually get to the top. Um, anyway, he was the reigning world champion, certainly a worthy world champion. I believe uh, Jeff Sonis will mark Anand as one of the greatest chess players of all time, easily in the top 20 or 30 best chess players of all time. And uh, uh, between his challenger, Magnus Carlsen, um, I will say that Anand did not make the most of his opportunities in this match and uh, wound up losing three games. Although early in the match, the tie definitely seemed to be going for Anand. Um, maybe if he had made a little bit better hay of his, his um, opportunities, he might have done better. But anyway, this is game 10, the final game of the match. Anand desperately needed to win. He had lost games 5, 6, and game 9, I believe. And uh, basically, Carlson, any draw puts Carlson you know, into the world championship. He's the winner. So Anand had to win out, basically, to even have a remote hope of, of, of uh, going to a tiebreaker. I didn't think that was going to happen. I mean, chances of that happened, I think, were pretty slim. But um, anyway, Anand ha was in a must-win situation, and he's playing the black pieces here. And Carlson is white. So without any further ado, we'll get into the game. Magnus Carlson is white. His rating is 2870. Viswanathan Anand, Grandmaster Viswanathan Anand, the reigning world champion, is black. He's 2775. And this is game 10 of the five world championship match that was played in Chennai, India. And I believe it was played on November 22nd, 2013. So without any further ado, we'll get into the game. Again, Carlson is white and Anand is black. E4, C5. Finally, we see a Sicilian. You know, we haven't seen too many Sicilians in this match. And obviously, I think that that was pretty much, you know, the it was like a must-win situation. So Anand has, tr has to try, if at all possible, to make the game sharp and to play a, a sharp, you know, variation. And, of course, probably Carlson is going to be avoiding the most dangerous complications because he has no need to, to, to go into the most complicated lines. In fact, uh, uh, Anand in his world championship match with Kramnik uh, got into many sharp lines and basically outdueled the great Kramnik, uh, you know, in those those lines. Also, the same could, much could be said for Topolov, Topolov, or when he played uh, uh, Topolov. Topolov also, I think, got outgunned and outprepared in his match with Anand. So anyway, uh, E4, C5, Knight F3, D6, now here they can go into like the, there's many lines of the Sicilian that are extremely complicated. For example, the poison pawn of the Nidorf or um, a dragon or something like that. Obviously, Anand's got to play something ultra sharp and something that, you know, is almost impossible for White to make a quick and easy draw. And of course, you know, Carlson's really is in the driver's seat. You know, a draw gives him the world championship. So we see Bishop to be five check. And this continuation, is, some people call it the Moscow continuation. It is not to be underestimated. And if you want to see a really thorough analysis of this opening, I'm not even going to bother to try to do a deep analysis of this opening here. I've already analyzed this opening several times on my web pages. And if you'll find my Game of the Month web page, and it's on www.ajschess.com, and uh, just go to my Game of the Month website, you'll find several. At least I know there's at least one uh, game in there where I've, I believe it was a game... Oh, I don't remember who the players were now. The names escaped me. But anyway, there were some very t high rated players, and I very carefully and thoroughly analyzed basically all the lines of that match, uh, of that uh, all the lines of that particular opening. And uh, there's references to modern chess openings, et cetera. And of course, you can also check this out in the database and also in modern chess openings. But anyway, bishop b5 check, knight d7. That's not the main line there. Just very quickly, we're going to go through what the power book considers to be main line is uh, bishop d7, bishop takes d7, queen takes d7, white castles, knight c6, c3. And the the uh, the um, engine I'm running for its 13 in the background calls that dead equal. I have to say white has a little bit of an advantage. He can build a strong center with d4, and uh, it's, it's probably a lot easier to play the white position than the black position. 
Probably the reason that Anon pl avoided bishop to d7 here is because, you know, it leads to exchange of pieces, and he's trying, for the most part, to avoid exchanges. So he plays knight d7, which is, you know, probably a, you know, slower line, but also a more complicated line, and uh, he, he's trying to avoid, you know, not too many exchanges. Now if Carlson exchange, at least he gets the, white, you know, black will get the bishop pair for the uh, bishop that's given up. So d4, c takes d4, queen takes d4. Now White's got a very easy game. He's got a nice game and just a, um, you know, a nice advantage. A6. Now here I think White, sh the correct move, I believe according to the power book, is bishop to e2. Um, that's probably, you know, that's the indicated move. That's certainly the engine move there. But uh, uh, bishop takes d7 check was played. And again, I think what Carlson is trying to do is he's simply trying to stay on top and he's going to exchange pieces as much as possible because obviously a, a draw gives him the world championship so he's in a very enviable position right now and probably his uh, choice and choices in the opening are more dictated by the match situation than by what he might play in some other situation so anyway bishop takes d7 check bishop takes d7 c4 now this is also a very nice position for white white hasn't lost time he's ahead in development he's got slightly more space uh, the engine calls this almost equal, and uh, Houdini says it's dead equal. I think that's deceptive. I think here White has a little bit of, he has a Marazzi bind type setup, although it's not a true Marazzi bind because White's exchanged off at least one set of minor pieces there, so that makes Black's position, position just a little bit easier here. So anyway, c4, knight f6, bishop g5, e6, knight c3. White's pieces go to very natural and easy squares, bishop e7, castles. i got to say here the opening can be considered to be over and if I had to give anyone an advantage here it definitely would have to be uh, white white has a tiny bit of an advantage here although black is not without chances because he does have the bishop pair and in a really long end game it's possible the bishop pair could become a factor bishop c6 queen d3 black castles knight d4 rook c8 b3 that's to prevent any tactics on the c4 pawn there Queen c7. Um, here, the the engine move. I think both Houdini and Fritz. I don't. I think we're almost out of openings book. Yes, the the opening book has long since been left behind. And um, you know, I'm not even really interested in you know who played what line or you know what grandmaster game was played in these lines. Really, not a lot of that really matters that much. That's not critical here. What is critical is the fact that you know Carlson's you know a draw puts him in into the world champ makes him the world champion and Anand's in a must win situation so he's looking for basically any way that he can uh you know try to sharpen the position um um also too though when, when i post this on the uh, on youtube i will make sure that i provide the link to the uh, chess base analysis and they always do a very thorough analysis there and the article in chess base there's a video analysis there's an analysis that you can download for free to your to download the pgn file to your computer so and they'll cover pretty much they usually cover that sort of thing so anyway right now for the video analysis i'm just basically trying to you know examine the fighting part of the chess knight takes c6 queen takes c6 rac1 very natural move there. Uh, Black's threat was like if, you know, white didn't do anything, he might play b5. And if pawn takes pawn, if this rook wasn't on c1, this knight would be hanging. And white would just simply, you know, lose material. In other words, let's say he played rook b1, b5, instead of rook c1. Let's say in this position, white played rook b1. Then just simply b5. And if pawn takes pawn, queen takes knight. And, you know, the game is won for, for uh, black there in that position. So our AC1, that's just to protect the knight, and now b5 really shouldn't be a possibility. h6, bishop b3. No reason for white to exchange off his last bishop and give black maybe the slightly better, you know, uh, dark square bishop in a, in a fairly wide open position. Knight d7, bishop to d4, rf d8, h3. White's just playing very simple moves. And now we can stop and say the, the opening's pretty much over. Both sides have developed their pieces. White has maybe a tiny, tiny advantage in space, but the position is pretty much equal. I mean, black has no real exploitable weaknesses. The d-pawn can be covered by enough pieces, and in the end game, the king can march over and protect it. So I don't think there's any real winning chances here for white, but by the same token, black doesn't have a ghost of a chance. You know, he needs to generate an attack, and he, Carlson's not allowing him to uh, 
get any kind of position whereby he could, you know, make sharpen the position and, and make it into an all-out attack. Queen c7, rfd1. Now white has all of his pieces in the center, and I, I believe he's got to be slightly better. Uh, white has no weaknesses, whereas black does have a slightly weak d pawn here. Queen a5, queen d2, king f8, queen b2. I think, you know, white again is going for tactics. If, you know, black isn't real careful, one idea is knight a4 there. This knight moves away, knight a4, and there'll be threats of a fork there, and this pawn here will be hanging. So black actually has to be a little bit careful in this position. Uh, he, you know, one bad move, and he could be in trouble. He's not in trouble right now, according to Fritz, but, you know, one bad move, and he could easily find himself in a bad situation. King g8, a4. And again, this is not a normal game. You know, you have to remember the match situation. I think the match situation is going to pretty much dictate everything. Anand's not going to be able to exchange queens. He's not ever going to be able to, unless he's just absolutely forced, he's going to get mated or lose material. He's going to try to avoid all exchanges because he's in a, you know, winner go home type situation. So a4, queen h5, knight e2, bishop f6, white plays rook c3 there. Uh, there, the computer likes just simply queen c2, which is dead equal. I mean, it's dead, dead, dead equal. But, you know, Carlson has a different idea here. Rook c2 is not probably not too bad of a move. Bishop takes d4. Rook takes d4. Queen e5. Queen d2. Knight f6. I might have went knight c5 there, and that does seem to be the um, indicated line. I mean, black's not going to win, but it just seemed like in the Sicilian I played literally hundreds of Sicilians, and I can tell you for a fact that in these kind of positions, the knight generally sets off pretty well on c5. In fact, a lot of times you can play c5 and a5, and then white can no longer kick the knight, and, and then you can maybe try to go forward and win. But, you know, according to Fritz, knight c5 was the indicated move, and white might be just a tiny, tiny bit better, but uh, not by very much. But, uh, you know, Anon, uh, I mean, rather, uh, yeah, Anon's got his own ideas. He's trying to make it a sharp position. Knight f6, rook e3, rook d7. He's trying to cover, black is trying to cover the backward pawn on d6. White can't be allowed to stack up here on this pawn. a5, queen g5, e5. Um, now black's got a little bit of a problem if he plays pawn takes pawn here. In fact, actually, we need to go back one move. Uh, queen g5 was, was just a terrible mistake. Uh, the correct move there was a move like uh, king f8 or g6. Anything like that would have probably been acceptable. Uh, queen g5 should have been a losing move there. Uh, that just drops a pawn. Now e5, and black cannot play simply pawn takes pawn because of rook takes rook. Uh, also better than, than a5 was maybe just moving this rook, rook at c8 to d8. All those moves were better than queen g5. Queen g5 was just an error. You know, really just give it a blunder. I mean, it's, a, it's an oversight. And um, I don't know what prompted Anon to play such a move. But anyway, e5. And now black goes knight e8. That's pretty much the only move there. And now what's really funny about this game, I mean, with any normal move like knight c3, knight e4, uh, the game is very quickly over because white's, you know, I mean, black's got to lose a pawn. Um, just about any move here, maybe even g3 and f4. Anything would be the correct move according to Fritz is knight c3. And then rook c6, b4, rook d8, f4, queen e7. That's what Fritz is looking at right now. It shows the line. I have the Fritz engine running in the background. But knight c3, and I've already uh, both used both Houdini and Fritz on this game. And knight c3 is definitely the indicated move here. And the chess base line, they, can, they cover the line. It shows white's clearly winning. We can look at it just very quickly. Let's just follow the Fritz moves here. Knight c3 was, was the correct move here. Black plays rook c6 b4 let's see if there's anything let me look around here for a minute i don't really see anything that's instantly winning you'd like to play knight e5 here but it's not quite time for that yet because of simply queen takes pawn on e5 and there's i don't really see follow up to that pawn sack uh, you can't even get your pawn back because this pawn will, after queen takes e5 this pawn is guarded four times attack three times but guarded four so b4 that seems to be a good move there rook d8 Yeah, that's that's probably a good move there. Queen e7, f5. Still can't play pawn takes pawn because the rook on d8 is attacked twice. The queen and rook battery here is very nice, and if pawn takes pawn, simply 
Rook takes d8, winning. King h7. Queen d3. I think we can stop here. It's pretty obvious white's winning. He's threatening ideas like f5 and pawn takes pawn and all kinds of great things. And I think black's position is just slowly falling apart. We'll follow it a few more moves. Uh, black, white can't, black can't allow moves like f6 check hitting the queen and putting the king check on check along that diagonal there. So he goes king h8. F takes e6. F takes e6. I'm waiting to see when white actually does win material here. Knight e2. Well, now the machine says, according to Fritz, I don't know what Houdini would say here. According to Fritz, white black has to play g5. And now I think we can just give up this position is totally hopeless. White hasn't won the pawn yet, but black's stuck in a horrible pin, and his king side is now just wasted. I mean, there's too many open lines there. I think now we have to write that position off as just a completely lost game. So we got to say that Black's probably winning easily there, and uh, we don't have to go much further than that. But anyway, in this position, rather than the correct knight c3, after e5, knight e8, surprisingly Carlson played this move. That move, e takes d6, was just an absolute error too. I mean, we got to, and lost two, we'll go back and give when he played queen g5. That was a bad move also. All right. Where did Black play Queen G5 the first time? Move 28. A5, Queen G5. That was the incorrect move there. Probably just simply, maybe just uh, Rook at C to C7 there. That might have been fine there. But Queen G5 was definitely an error. We'll give that a question mark and move on. But anyway, after E5, 98. Carlson, I'm almost amazingly, he plays E takes D6. I'm not sure why he played that move. Uh, must have been based on our oversight because almost immediately um, uh, Anand's going to get his pawn back. Rook C6, F4, Queen D8. And now this pawn's attacked four times. One, two, three, four. And it's only, white can only protect it one more time. And if F4, F, I mean rather if C4, C4, C5, simply Rook takes pawn on F4. So somewhere along the line, Carlson obviously had to make uh, an error here. This was a, a very bad mistake, almost a comedy of errors, if you will. But I think that was, again, the its nerves and, and time consumption and also, too, just the, the conditions of the match, you know, taking over. Both players have played a very long match. And, you know, while computers might play long positions and never make a mistake, even humans, even the world's best player will make a mistake, you know, in a long, tough match. Um, you know, just... You know, nerves get the better of you, and sometimes, you know, I don't know. There must have been some kind of oversight there. He certainly couldn't have intended to give back his pawn. I will say it was a fairly deceptive position. There was no easy way for for White to win the pawn and keep it. So anyway, Queen D8. White plays R E D3, and now we just have Rook C takes D6. Rook takes D6. Rook takes D6. Rook takes. Queen takes. Queen takes. Knight takes D6, and now White plays King F2, and. White's maybe a tiny bit better here, and this is exactly what Anand did not want. Remember, he's three points down, and he's basically in a, you know, win this game or go home type of situation. So even the the fact that you know Carlson gave back the pawn really wasn't that big of a deal in terms of you know changing the match situation. It didn't alter anything radically. Um, you know, Carlson won a pawn and then gave it right back, but he didn't really endanger his game at all. And I think probably the the pressure had to have been on Anon. Anon was on the, you know, the in the seat of, in the unenviable position of being, you know, in 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 the place that if he doesn't win this game, then the, the match is over. And I think that was almost an impossible situation to be in. And now he's in an end game, and Carlson's even slightly better. And you know, now Carlson's in his element. And I really think that, you know, at this point, you know, Anon. Might have offered a draw, just offered a draw. The sportsman thing, like the thing to do, would be offer a draw and just concede that the match is over, you know, and and um, you know just make get things over. Uh, Anon, for whatever reason, decided to play it out. King f8, king e3, king e7. These are just pretty much normal moves here. King d4. When, uh, for beginners, people who don't have a lot of experience or have never studied chess much, in the end game, you generally try to centralize your king. Whereas in the opening, you keep the king, you know, tucked away safe and keep him out of the way of your pieces in the end game when you only have one or two pieces left the king becomes a very powerful piece and in the end game generally you try to march your king to the center and that's what white's doing here king d7 black's pretty much doing the same thing 
king c5 king c7 knight c3 here uh if fritz says play g5 here i don't really know i mean one way or the other it doesn't really matter now i mean any exchange here is going to help white because he wants to draw and the draws any exchange of pawns is going to help him get that much closer to the draw but anyway knight of five knight e4 that's the correct move again according to fritz knight e3 g3 f5 knight to d6 black plays g5 and uh i don't know where it's happening but somewhere you know well, white's probably slightly better here. Certainly, he's no worse. Uh, the engine says that maybe white has a tiny, tiny advantage. But uh, black's got to be careful here. He comes, he can become co overextended. I can tell you, with his king on the second rank, these are generally not kind of positions you got to watch out for. And these kind of positions, I think it's probably just safer for white to just move his pieces. I mean, black to move his king back and forth or something. You know, just move his knight back and forth, do something like that, but not to push pawns. But anyway, g5. Knight e8 check, king d7, knight f6 check, king e7, knight g8 check, king f8, knight takes h6, g takes f4, g takes f4, king g7. And uh, now white's got his knight trapped. It's actually a, kind of funny in a way that, you know, white's, he ran down a pawn, but he, he got his knight trapped. I don't know if he intended to do this. Or what he thought he was winning he got caught up in the moment uh, maybe taking the h6 pawn wasn't advisable there um, maybe maybe this whole line 98 check just wasn't any good maybe after g5 maybe you know white should have just simply played a simple move like you know b4 with the idea of b4 b5 and trying to make something happen um, or even knight f7 there that's another idea for white but uh, anyway this 98 check you know this whole line here is the doesn't quite feel right. Knight f6, king e7, knight g8 check, king g king f8, knight takes h6, takes, takes, and now king g7. Now, lo and behold, white's knight is trapped. He's actually trapped his knight. He's losing a piece for the average player might resign here, you know, thinking he's just lost. But white has up a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. He's up a pawn, and his king can literally gobble up black's entire queen side. So basically all white has to do here is chop as many pawns as possible, march his king up, gobble the, the, the queen side up, and probably he can make a draw. Knight takes f5 check. He takes f5, king b6, knight g2, king takes b7, knight takes f4, king takes a6, knight e6. I'm not sure. Well, oh, I guess knight e6 is the correct move. I might have played knight takes h3 here, but I, I don't think it would have made any difference. Um, Oh wait a minute! Maybe that might lose. You got to be careful about about uh, you know if you queen if white queens a pawn, then he might just be winning because he's got several more pawns to queen. Black's knight can become useless, so maybe knight takes e6 wasn't. I mean knight takes h3 wasn't the correct move according to Fritz. The correct move there is knight e6. But now you know white's got a pretty much a forced draw. I mean black's only got one pawn. King b6. Give that move an exclam. You know a lot of beginners don't understand that move, but uh, a master knows that. The rook pawn is the most dangerous to the horse. The knight cannot deal easily with these pawns on the edge of the board. So king b6, and now the, the a pawn is free to fly in. f4, a6, f3, a7, f2, a8, queen, black queens. And, and white's in no danger of losing simply because, you know, he has three pawns to black's knight. In fact, black has to be careful that if the queens doesn't come off, White doesn't promote one more pawn, and then black would just be lost. His king would have to probably run down the h pawn, and then white would promote his b pawn, something like that. So now it's you know it's it's all over now, but the shout and the, all that's left is to make a few moves. Queen d5, centralizing the queen, a nice safe move. Let's see. Uh, Fritz likes c5 there. I don't know if it really makes that much difference, but certainly queen d5 is a good move too. Queen e1, just to, def to defend the, the black knight. Again, c5, it looks like a very good move. For whatever reason, Carlson plays queen d6, queen e3 check, king a6, knight c5 check, king b5, knight takes b3, queen c7 check, king h6, queen b6 check. Well, I, I can see now what Carlson was doing. He saw a way to force the queens off, and he's just going for that. Queen takes b6, king takes b6, king h5, h4, 
king takes h4 c5 knight takes c5 and here they agree to a draw because after king takes c5 it's kings only and and it's it's pretty obviously a draw in fact i think it becomes a draw as soon as the last pawn leaves the board by rule of chess nowadays uh, as soon as the last pawn you know leaves the board then you know neither side you know in this position can uh, with the knight black's knight extra knight is useless i mean he can chase down the white king and give a zillion checks but he can never checkmate so that means the game is drawn it's about drawn game over uh carlson draws the game he wins the match easily and uh, that that will that does it for Anon. Anon had a great run. He was a, most certainly a worthy world champion. He may be back to play another match one day. Um, yeah, he's certainly uh, you know a, a able tactician, a great at preparing openings. I mean, he's just a a real wizard in chess. I mean, he didn't get to the world championship by accident. And he held it against several challenges. He uh, fended off Kramnik. He fended off. Topolov, he friend, or Topolov, and he also friended, uh, fended off uh, Gelfand. So, uh, and he'd played Gary Kasparov a match on top of the World Trade Center in 1995. Kasparov won, but you know it shows Anand's been around for a pretty good long time, and he's not done by any stretch of the imagination. Um, Carlson is the new world champion. Congrats to him. He's a great player, a very worthy player. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot of exciting games and. You know, you know, total uh, shift in the way you know chess is played. Much more emphasis on the end game, I'm sure. And uh, maybe Carlson will show some interest in some really sharp attacks too. I'm not sure exactly, you know, what his plans are. He, I don't know if he, you know, wants to change his style. His style, is, one of his great strengths, seems to be to play unbelievable end games. You know, I mean, he's just a he. He might be several hundred points stronger than most GMs in the end game, in my opinion. He just. He plays so close to the machine moves most of the time. He just shows a native understanding and always getting it right in the end game. And it's just an amazing how how well he calculates an end game. His loss to Peter Svidler in the uh, last round of the candidates match, I believe it was Svidler or uh, Grischuk, one of those two. But anyway, he lost in the last round of the candidates matches. And really, a lot of people forget that you know uh, Carlson in early going had a huge lead. But in the end, Kramnik actually came up, and they were pretty much tied in the last round. And both players, Kramnik and Carlson, lost in the last round of the candidates match. And had you know Kramnik drawn or won while Carlson was losing to Ivanchuk, then you know it, Carlson would have never made it to the world championship. So, but once he got there, he certainly acquitted himself well. Plus three is a very nice score. Um, it pretty much uh, validates his extremely high twenty-eight seventy opening. Uh, I mean, it's 2870 rating, rather. And, uh, well, that does it for my uh, coverage of the World Championship match. And that does it for this video. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you've uh, enjoyed it. Uh, maybe you learned something about chess. Maybe you didn't. But if you enjoyed my videos and, and would like to support my webpage and video build, you know, making of videos, if you'd like to support my efforts in those areas, please go to the PayPal website. That's www.paypal.com and make a donation under my email address, which is lifemasteraj at yahoo.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.